Hey guys, what's up? Vinayak here. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I don't have a hunch. It's just the mic is very low, so you know I have to bend down a bit. But anyway, <laughs> this video will be covering a Kalman filter design for a multivariable system. In my last video, I made a video on just the simple 1D Kalman filter, but this video will be a little bit more in depth. So I'll be covering a lot of math, a lot of concepts, and I'll be also showing you at the same time how you can implement it yourself in Simulink and MATLAB. So this video is very long bring popcorn bring chips bring you know something um have some notes with you bring a coffee as well i'll be going into a, a lot of details but this will i feel that this video will be very helpful if you're designing something for your school projects or if you you know if you're doing something for your work because common filters are used all the time in the industry so it's very important um with that being said let's begin you may get bored but that's that's not on me <laughs> But if you're interested, then this video is very good. So let's begin. So to be begin with, we have our state space model x dot is equal to ax plus bu and y equals cx plus du. I've covered this before in many videos. If we have n states, m inputs and p outputs, it's obviously a system where x equals n by 1, uh, y equals p by 1, u equals m by 1, and the matrices a, b, c and d have the appropriate dimensions. Again, however, in the real world, systems have noise, as I said before in my last video, on Kalman filters. So in the state space model, we typically represent noise by the terms W and V. So W is for the measurement process noise, X, and V is for Y. We also assume that typically W and V have no correlation. It means that the noise W occurs independently of the noise V, right? So that's very important. Since we normally do not include W again in the Y, we set H equals zero. And G and H are just the matrices. Um, typically G is just an identity matrix, so just once along the diagonal, so it doesn't affect anything, and H equals zero. So W is obviously then, since we have N states, W is N by one and V equals P by one. So that's your state space with noise. Um, in my last video on Kalman filters, I mentioned that the Q and R were scalar terms because you just had a 1D filter. It was very easy. This time, however, it is a bit more involved. So Q is N by N and R is P by P. You have to make sure that Q and R must be diagonal and they are positive definite. So we have five states and two outputs. Q will be a five by five and R will be a two by two. If it's not diagonal, I guess it's okay. But normally, at least I do it in a way that they are diagonal because it just makes it easier after and it saves the computation time. All the eigenvalues of Q and R are positive and I don't have any negative numbers because normally covariances are, it's a square value, right? So it must be positive. I would like to introduce you to someone, Mr. Riccardi. He lived from the time period of 1676 to 1754. I believe that's a lifespan of 78 years, quite long. He invented the Riccardi equation, which is a differential equation that is quadratic in the unknown function. So you don't have to dive in, into it too much, but the format is CXY squared plus BXY plus AX. However, in control system design, we normally have matrix equations because normally in modern control field, everything is a matrix. So you have to put it in matrix form. I would like to point out that we have the algebraic Riccardi equation or the ARE. It's simply A transpose times P plus P multiplied by A minus PBK plus Q. K is a feedback gain. So if you have a feedback control system and if you're solving for the LQR, it actually solves for K here in this equation. And P is just a positive definite matrix. So an A is your system matrix. So, you know, A and B are from your system model. And that's how what we do. Here we have the Riccardi equation in discrete form in the industry. Many of the control systems are in discrete time domain because on a microprocessor, you can implement it much faster. Uh, discrete time systems are very important and they are used all the time in aviation, especially for digital control systems. So any control system that is in a digital format will be discrete. You have the discrete time Riccardi equation there and you have to solve for P. So P is also a positive definite matrix. The optimal gain is that that is the Kalman gain. So before I had the Kalman gain in my last video, and that's very important because if you have the wrong Kalman gain, it means that your filter will not be stable and you will diverge. The Kalman gain is given by APC transpose multiplied by CPC transpose plus R inverse. So 
this is a very standard equation um just know it very very well um if you have to design a filter gain you solve p with this equation and then you put in l and clearly the size of l is n times p so the idea is that this common filter so let's say you have five states and four outputs you might think that we can only estimate four states but no the common filter lets you estimate every single state in your system irrespective of the number of outputs so let's say if you have four out states and one output then you can still estimate all four states so that is why l is equal to n times p so if let's say you have five states and two outputs l will be five times two and then you will get a five by one vector and then you can estimate that we'll see more after so just in case we used a steady state filter because we only have one value of l if you have to do it every time that means you have to solve the riccardi equation at every time step which means that it'll be very time consuming and the stability of the filter last time i gave it by a minus k times c so k times one here it's the exact same thing it'll be a minus lc this matrix a minus lc must be a horowitz matrix which means that it has to be a stable matrix the closer they are to zero which means that the closer it is to zero the faster your filter is however it won't remove much noise so you have to be aware of that also the stability of your filter is separate from your control system this is called the separation principle and i'll get more into it after so now we have to do our implementation right so we have x is n by one we we have all the stuff here and we have an estimate of x is given by x hat so how do we do this keep watching so we can now go into MATLAB and design the filter. I've just copied and pasted my system matrices A, B, C, and D from the paper into here. Next, you, you can check the eigenvalues of the open loop system. It turns out to be stable, but we have a pole at zero, which means that it is marginally stable. So we have to take that into account. Next, we can design the discrete time model. So first, we can f define the our states. It is u, w, q, the angle and height. The inputs are thrust and elevator. Since we have the same number of outputs, you can say outputs equal states. And we can define our continuous time state space model as shown here. If we do a step response of our open loop system in continuous time, you can see that all the values converge but you do have a bit of a a big oscillation there because your system is is marginally stable correct so you you will have that and height all the values go up next we can specify our sampling time we chose 20 hertz at 0.05 seconds and define the discrete time model here now so far we have not yet included any noise so the dial come in a bit Let's use the zero order hold because this is what is used to commonly discretize a continuous time system. So we can then obtain our discrete matrices A, B, C, and D by just typing in sys underscore D dot A dot B dot C and so on. If you look at the open loop matrix now, you can see that the values have changed for A and B because you discretize it, but C and D will be the same. This is always the case. And the eigenvalues of the continuous time and the discrete time, they equal the same. But on the z-plane, you can see that three of them are at 1, which means that they are almost unstable. So on the z-plane, keep in mind that if it stays within the unit circle of 1, it means it's stable. But if it's outside, it is unstable. So we don't have any unstable pole, which means that it has been discretized correctly. Now let's design our observers. First, we have to define G and H, the matrices as discussed before. Um, I put G as C because it's obviously identity matrix. And H will be zeros, as I said before, because we're not including W, the noise W, within the outputs Y. So it'll just be zero. Now we have to define the covariance matrices Q and R. So just use a diagonal operator. So Q will be 0 0.15, five times along the diagonal. And R will be, I chose for now, 0 0.05 times the diagonal. So if we will see what they look like, you can see them there very easily. Now we have to obtain the gain. So you have to use this command here. L comma P equals Kalman, sys. 
underscore kf which we will define in a bit q r and zero we assume that w and v have no correlation the noise for the process and the measurement noise so you have to specify zero in the last parameter n okay but we have to define our disturbed system so you have to put sys underscore kf is equal to ss a o l b g so concaten concatenate those and d h so this system here which we just did on line 58 is your state space model with the disturbances and this is what matlab needs to design the kalman filter properly so we have obtained l and p from there let's just check that the l that matlab obtains is the same one from the riccardi equation so let's define another l bar which will calculate L using the Riccardi equa equation optimal gain and then compare L bar to L. So here we have APC multiplied by CPC plus R inverse and the error. So compare L bar and L, it should be zero because that is when you know that you have designed L correctly and MATLAB has used the discrete time algebraic Riccardi equation. So that's our system there and we can quickly obtain the poles of A minus LC because that is your stability and compare those two. So it is turns out to be stable. So that's it. Our, for our observer is done. Let's now go into Simulink and build our model of the observer. So drag in a bunch of tags. It's the from and the go to blocks. So we will have to copy our matrices in here. A, B, C and L. So we can do that by defining constants and tapping in the variable names because obviously Simulink can obtain variables from the MATLAB workspace. So do the same thing for A, B, C and L. We can make an area here by just clicking and dragging and typing in matrices. So these are our system model parameters which will stay the same in the entire simulation. So next we can drag in a bunch of blocks that we need. Let's drag in a step. For the inputs, now we are defining our two inputs, thrust and elevator. We assume that the input is the same just for now, but they can be some, some, some. they could be any, anything else. It doesn't matter. You can choose whichever inputs you want. Now let's drag in the reshape function to make it into a two by one column vector. And now let's drag in the matrix multiplication tool because we are multiplying B times U. So we have to drag in the go to block and the from block so from will read the value in b from the go to block so we have to put in b there if you see that the tag name has to be the same so that's just saying that it is b multiplied by u so u is a two by one vector and b is a matrix so we have to do that drag in a sum block and drag in the discrete time integrator it's called the unit delay in symbolink so one over z and let's drag in some more blocks here now we're defining the equation x underscore k plus 1 is equal to a multiplied by x times k plus b times uk so we have to do that this way so let's drag in that let's so finish it up here now we have to add our noise so we have to drag in a noise in simulink this is available from the band limited white noise block so drag that in and paste it there and since we have five states we have to make it into a five by one vector one thing I would recommend is drag in the multiplexer, combine them, and then use the reshape block again to make it into a five by one. So that should complete your process model there. Next, we have the measurement model. So Y equals C multiplied by X. So exact same procedure, not that difficult. Just drag in the block and the from tag and put in C there to make it C multiplied by X. And we have to add V in the same manner as we added W. Since you have the outputs equal to the number of states, the W and V will have the same dimensions. So that's our system done. And we can actually now save it just to make sure that it's not lost if something happens to our program. So now we can design the observer. But first, let's go into the target pane. Let's change the simulation settings to make it faster. So by default, Simulink uses variable step. I'm going to change it to fixed step and Euler's method with the step time of our sampling time of 0.05 seconds and then hit apply and hit OK. So that's done. Let's drag in a scope there to see what it looks like. 
and make sure that you make all your sampling times to be 0.05 seconds because if you specify a different sampling time the symlink will not know what to do so you have to make sure that it's un uniform everywhere so that's our states there and now we can design our observer let's uh, now copy and paste the block because the observer the common filter is the copy of the system but like what happens is that x gets replaced by x hat it's just that but and you don't have the noise but it's all the same so now we can do that this way and then we can now say that c times x hat is equal to y hat next we can put a sum block because we have to calculate the innovation given by l times y minus c multiplied by x hat so we're just doing that here and then connect it there so now that's our observer it's done so that's your Kalman filter that there the bottom part that is your Kalman filter and that's our system so we can let's see what they look like let's see how the filter evaluates the system estimates so drag in a bunch of demultiplexer blocks to split the signals again since we have five states we have to specify five outputs there and we can drag it twice to make sure that we can compare the two state estimates so on the top what i'm doing now is you have the process model so those are the actual noisy states and at the bottom we are dragging in the estimate states and we can also check the errors there by the innovation so i'm just specifying that that is the innovation there so yeah um we're just comparing what we have and it looks quite decent um the filter is quite noisy but you can change the values of q and r to remove more, more noise if you want to but i've shown you guys how to do it and you can just simply quickly try different designs of your filter you can see that the innovation hovers around zero it's noisy but it does stay around zero which means that the filter has done very well in removing any noise and it does estimate it very accurately so that's it for the symbolic part and you can just change values in q and r as i'm doing here and try different values of l and so on so that's it for the video and i hope you guys learned something new it, it was very long but thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next time hey guys thank you for watching um i'll be doing a q q and a video at 10,000 subscribers so if you want to ask me any question you can either dm me on instagram or you can also go in the community tab on my youtube channel and you can post the question below on my post so have a nice day bye